This is Danny Gould with the Gould Team Selling Silicon Valley, and in this video, I'm going to cover one of the biggest mistakes that I see buyers agents making all over, not just here in Silicon Valley, but literally all over the United States. This one mistake alone could be costing you hundreds of thousands of dollars in commissions every single year. Now, you might be asking yourself, how could just one mistake cost me hundreds of thousands of dollars per year? And the reality is, is it's just not the mistake, but it's the repetitive nature of the mistake that leads agents to form bad patterns and bad habits that will ultimately lead to them being less productive than they ultimately could be. For those of you that are new to the channel, I'm a 27 year old real estate agent here in Silicon Valley. I've been selling now for about four and a half years. And over the last four and a half years, I've made well over $1 million in commissions. And I'm really just here to impart my knowledge to you and, and I'm not telling you that I've made a million dollars to brag but it's simply to let you know that I know what I'm talking about or at least you know I think I do <laughs> but anyways guys you're probably thinking to yourself what is this mistake right what 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 should I be avoiding what should I not be doing that could ultimately cost me hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of commission and the reason that I know that this is a mistake is because I used to do this all the time in fact my first two years in real estate, I, I took a lot of these. You probably took a lot of these. What, 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 did you, what did I take a lot of, right? I made that mistake over and over and over again my first two years. And ultimately in making those mistakes, I learned that it wasn't an effective way to do business. So what is this mistake? One of the biggest mistakes that I see real estate agents make is taking weekend appointments with buyers. Now you might be thinking to yourself, what? I, I only see buyers on the weekends or buyers are only available for me on the weekends. And so uh, here's what I'm getting at is that setting a new appointment with a buyer on the weekend is a bad way to sell real estate. And I'll tell you why. I've learned many things in my career, uh, but one of the most important things that I've realized is that someone who's serious about buying a home will take time out of their normal business schedule, out of their normal daily routine to come meet with you for the first time. So I'm talking to all of you agents out there that set appointments at open house or set appointments using online lead sources like Zillow, Realtor.com, Facebook, anything like that. The first thing that you should be doing is setting an appointment with that buyer, right? Now, if you've been watching my channel or if you've watched videos of me in the past, you'll know that I'm a big proponent of never showing a buyer a house before actually meeting with them in person first. And if you want a really effective script on how to close a buyer, whether they're in person or over the phone, for that first appointment, go ahead and click that video up there. That is the quintessential script to get those buyers into your office before you show them a house, right? But let's say that you make that appointment, right? And the buyer says, okay, great, but I can, only, I can only meet with you on the weekend. How many times have you heard from a buyer or a prospect that they can only meet with you on the weekends, right? Because the weekdays are so busy that they can't possibly meet with you on the weekday. Well, let me ask you something. When they have to go to the doctor, do you think that they go to the doctor on the weekends? When they wanna set up a, a meeting with their CPA or their lawyer or their dentist or, or anyone else, do you think they're setting those appointments on only the weekends? Hell no. But for some reason they think that because we're real estate agents, we should cater to them and we should cater to their needs. Now I'm all for customer service. Don't get me wrong. I'm all for serving the needs of the client. But the reality is, is that where there's a will, there's a way. And if someone is serious about buying a home, they will in fact find the time to meet with you in person during normal business hours. If that person comes in during normal business hours, the success rate goes through the roof. But if someone is only willing to meet with you on the weekends to talk about their home search, think about the precedent that that sets from there going forward. You know what they're gonna tell you at that first meeting, and, and I know because I've learned this the hard way, is that when you're at that first meeting, they say, you know, I don't think I can see houses, you know, except for maybe on the weekends. Do you think we can like see this house on like Saturday at 6 p.m. and then this house at 6.30 and then this house at 7 p.m.? <laughs> They're gonna be that client that sees 150 houses before they even make an offer. And guess what? They're all gonna be on the weekends in the evening. I, I don't know about you guys, but I have way better things to do than be showing houses to buyers on a Saturday at 6 p.m. 
And not only that, that's taking away from time that I could potentially be spending at open house to you know, generate more leads for myself or potentially even just like relax. I don't know, that, I know it's a stretch, but like it's a possibility, right? It, it, it's a possibility. Now, I'm not saying that you should never show any buyer for any circumstance or meet with any buyer for any circumstance on the weekend. There are a few exceptions, right? Uh, for example, one time I was working with an anesthesiologist and his schedule was so crazy and so out of whack that there were some times where I did need to make, uh, you know, slight accommodations for them, right? But this is after I'd been working with them for a while and despite his crazy schedule, like he was an anesthesiologist, right? His wife was a tech like employee uh, working at one of the, the biggest tech companies in the area at Uber and, um, and between the two of them, they still found time to meet with me on the weekdays. Now, I would much rather take a 6 p.m., a 6.30 p.m. appointment on a weekday to meet a new prospective client than meet with them on the weekend. Now, I can already hear the critics saying like, oh, Danny, you know, I have a buyer or I have a client that can only meet with me on the weekends for this reason or that reason. And, and you know what? Ultimately, it is your decision. But what I'm trying to save you from is the countless hours of showing less than 100% motivated people. To me, it's very obvious that their motivation maps directly back to their actions, right? So if they're only saying like, oh, you know, I can, I, I'll meet with you, but I'll only meet with you on the weekends. What that tells me is they're probably more than three months out from buying and they are still interested with, in meeting with you, right? And they are still interested in learning about your off-market properties and what you have to offer in the home buying process, et cetera. But it's not yet a priority in their life. And so what I would invite you to do is when they say, oh, I can only meet with you on the weekends, right? Say one of these two things. Oh, I, I completely understand that your schedule must be really busy. Let me ask you this. In the perfect world, if you found the perfect home today, would you be able to make an offer on it? Now, the reason that I ask that question is because then I'll really get to the bottom of their motivation. I'll really see if they're willing and able to make the purchase because they might be willing to make the purchase right now, but deep down inside, they know that they're not able. And so they're not yet willing to make it a priority in their life to meet with you, right? So if I, if I tell them, oh, Mr. Um, you know, Mr. Buyer, I, I can certainly appreciate that. And I know that you know, life is, is crazy, but let me ask you this. If we found you the perfect home today, would you be able to make an offer on it, right? Um, if they say yes, right, then say, well, then we should meet as soon as possible and I really don't wanna delay until the weekend. I know that you must eat lunch, right? And they're gonna say yes, of course, they're gonna say yes. Well, why don't we just meet during your lunch hour, right? I would much rather meet with them during their lunch hour. Now, the important thing is too, is getting the spouse in the same room, right? And I'll say, will all the decision makers be there? Oh no, my spouse. Well, your spouse needs to eat lunch too, right? So why don't the two of you just come to a decision as to which day this week you two wanna meet for lunch and you can just come have an extended lunch with me at my office. I'll even buy you lunch. And honestly, I've bought clients lunch before because they came to my office during business hours, right? And again, right, this just sets a precedent from here moving forward, right? If they were to delay it until the weekend, then you're taking time out of your schedule where you should be prospecting or could be prospecting for more clients at open houses, right? Or taking time to relax and rejuvenate and recuperate. It's not often that people talk about, especially in real estate, the recovery aspect, but I'm a firm believer in recovery after experiencing several bouts of burnout. And, and, and at some point you really have to ask yourself, you know, am I getting enough rest? And I'm sorry, but if you're showing buyers on Saturday and Sunday in the evening or in the morning or any time on the weekend, frankly, are you really getting the rest and the recovery that you need and that you deserve? Uh, probably not. But let's go back to that example with that buyer. And you ask them that same question, would you be able to make a move on it, right? And they say, no. Well, then you know exactly why they're not willing to meet with you yet. And then so instead of taking time out of your schedule, and wasting the next three to six months showing them houses, you simply ask them, well, why is that, right? Why don't you think that you would be ready? A lot of times it's financing, right? They don't think that they could get the proper financing in order. And then you get back to the root of it, right? You say, well, how much do you plan on bringing down, right? Or how much do you expect to bring down, right? And then you figure out if maybe there's a, a, a way to get them to where they wanna be 
faster using a different financing tool, right? A lot of buyers out there are very uninformed. They have no idea. They literally have no idea. They could buy a home with less than 20% down, right? Uh, there's a lot of programs out there for three and a half percent, five, 10, 15, 20. So there, there's a lot of options out there for buyers that they're not necessarily aware of. And in asking that question, you could pique their interest enough to where they wanna meet with you during the weekdays, right? But again, it, it's very simple. If they're not willing to meet with you on the weekdays, then there is a, a deeper reason why. Right? It's not because they only have time on the weekends. It's, that's not the reason why. It's because they're just not motivated enough. There's not a burning enough desire for them to meet with you during the weekdays. If they're willing and able to buy, then they should be willing to meet with you on the weekdays, right? The lunch example, right? A lot of them say, well, you know, yeah, but it's difficult because this, because that. My, my response to that is, you know, I completely understand and I, I get it, right? I, I've been there. So why don't we do this? Because I also have early evening appointments available. When do you usually get back home from work, right? And they'll say, oh, about like five or about six. Well, I can actually meet you at your home if you'd prefer, or you can come in and meet me at my office at one of those times. Uh, where do you work? And they'll usually say like this area or this area, right? And, and I'm fortunate enough to, have a, to be with a brokerage where we literally have offices all over the area. And so I'll say, well, why don't we just meet here at this office, it's very close to your work at 6 p.m. Would that work for you? And a lot of times in just compromising, right, the location, you're able to set that weekday appointment. And that's so much better for you and for your business than going and meeting with them on the weekends, right? But again, you're taking control of the situation. You are setting yourself apart because you're not just rolling over and saying, yes, of course, I'll take the weekend appointment, I'll take any appointment. But again, you're separating yourself from the other agents. You're not just some agent that's gonna roll over and, and, and take any appointment that I can get because I just need another commission check. Oh, no, that's not you. You're strong, you're stronger than that. You know, people are actually very attracted to people who are confident, right? And it does take a certain level of confidence to not just take the first thing that's given to you. Right, and the reality is, is that when a buyer says, yeah, of course, I'll meet with you, but I can only meet with you on the weekends, uh, the natural thing to say is, okay, great, yeah, I'll take anything that I can get, right? But that's not what's gonna get you to where you wanna be quickest. Because the reality is, is that there is a, a certain level of respect that is given to you once you set those boundaries, right? And, and you won't get that respect unless you command it at the beginning. It all happens at the beginning. And the only way to set yourself up for success is to set that foundation from the very beginning. And, and why do I think that this is so important? Because the truth is, is that every minute that you spend with someone who's less than motivated, you are losing the opportunity to work with someone who's more motivated, right? And so when I say that you have the ability or the opportunity to lose hundreds of thousands of dollars in commissions, I'm not kidding. I really believe that by working with unmotivated buyers, you could have five or six, I, and I've seen people, I've seen people at the office, right? And this was me when I was uh, just starting out. Uh, when I was just starting out, I was working with like five or six or seven buyers, but all of them were unmotivated. Almost all of them I had met on the weekend and, and none of them were actually making offers because they just were not in the mental space to buy. I had no way of separating them. Right, and so this is almost like the first line of defense, right? By making sure that you set that boundary and by only taking appointments on the weekdays, you're already setting like a barrier for entry, right? If someone's not willing to do that, then something's wrong, something's off, and it's better that they be someone else's problem. Someone else is gonna babysit them for the next year. They're gonna show them a million houses and then you'll meet them at open house a year later They'll still be looking, but then they'll be ready to buy, and then you'll close them, take them out, show them a couple houses, and get the deal. Do you guys see what I'm saying here? It's like, it's not rocket science. Um, I think a lot of people really just struggle to accept that they shouldn't just take whatever they can get. And, and as agents, I think, uh, especially if you're new or you are running low on cash or you haven't had a lot of success, you're more apt to take whatever you can get. But, but what I would invite you to do is to think about this. It's not necessarily the client, it could be you. It, it could simply be that you don't have the proper skills yet 
to execute at a high level. So instead of just continuing to do the same thing over and over and over again and expect different results, I would invite you to just take a different approach. Guys, as I'm editing the video, I just realized I lost a bunch of footage there, which is super disappointing, but I'm gonna try and recreate what I was just getting at, and that is I would invite all of you to take a different approach in what you're doing on a daily basis because ultimately, it's not the client's fault, right, uh, that they're not ready to buy, right? It's your fault for not knowing what to say and how to say it to figure out whether or not they're an A, B, or a C buyer, and then ultimately what to do with them at that point. So, uh, so what I would say is that if you're not currently strong enough or knowledgeable enough to know what to do, it doesn't mean that you can't get there, but take the next 30 days, take one step back to take two steps forward, if you will, and, uh, and make a commitment to yourself to role play uh, with someone at your office or by yourself or anything, right? Just figure out how you're going to implement new scripts that are going to take your business to the next level. Taking those scripts and learning them and internalizing them is going to give you the ability to deduce whether or not a buyer is ready to go or not, how to close them if they are, right? And then how to implement them into a follow-up system if they're not quite ready to buy, right? Because there's obviously a lot of buyers out there that aren't willing to meet with you on the weekdays, and the reason that they're not willing to meet with you on the weekdays is because they are not ready to buy, period, right? Either financially or whatever, incapable of making a purchase decision right now, and you need to figure out a way how to get them from point A, right, where they are right now, to point B, closing, right? And that takes a long follow-up system, right? And that takes certain scripts and dialogues along the way too. So lots of food for thought, guys. And by the way, if you're interested in any scripts or dialogues, I'm more than willing to share with all of you. So if you guys have any particular scripts or dialogues or objection handlers that you guys are particularly interested in learning from me, you can leave them in the comment box below and I'll go ahead and post another video in the future or series of videos uh, with objection handlers and scripts that have been effective for myself and for my team. That's it, guys. If you liked the video, go ahead and smash the like button down below. If you're new to the channel, this is the first video that you're watching, go ahead, subscribe down below. There's a lot more content coming your way. And if you already are subscribed, thank you so much for watching another video. You can always click the alert button down below so that you're notified every single time that I post a new video. That's all I got for you guys. I'd love to hear your comments down below. The reason I post these videos is because I want to keep you guys from making the same mistakes that I've made. And, and honestly, it pains me and makes me kind of sad when I see other agents, especially newer agents in the business or younger agents, just get steamrolled and, and, and not make any progress in this business and in this industry because they're making the mistakes that, that I made when I was young and, and, and experienced in getting new into the business. I can only hope that you guys learn and, and take away as much as you can from this and, and um, you know, leave a comment down below if, if, uh, if this helped, I, I would really love to know. This is Danny Gould with the Gould Team selling Silicon Valley and I'll catch you guys in the next video.